Hello, I'm Rachel from Dwenza Garden in Ireland and I'm behind the camera today because this is a greenhouses tour video. You heard me right, not a greenhouse tour video, but a greenhouses tour video because we're going to have a look at both of my greenhouses which have just been set up for winter. Everything is prepped, everything that's tender has been brought in and I want to show you what's looking good. So come on, let's go into the first greenhouse. We're now at my old greenhouse and as you can see it's been bubble wrapped for winter. Oh more about that very soon. <laughs> Funny story there. All the plants are tucked in and the bubble wrap just adds a bit of insulation. So I will be putting heating into this greenhouse to a minimum of five degrees during the winter and the bubble wrap just helps keep that heat in. I have a lot of plants here on the staging and some of them are coming into flower. Plants in the greenhouse border are still looking good and still in full leaf because they've had no reason to drop those leaves at all. It's nice and sunny and they're well protected. Generally, as you can see, the greenhouse is a lot less packed than it normally is. And that's because some plants have gone over to the new greenhouse. The big leaves on this solanum are really looking great at the moment. And if we look in here, can you see how my protea is, well, it's about to flower and it's got really big buds. This is, I think, the second biggest of the several buds that are on the plant. Justitia is in full flower at the moment, looking really happy. And I hope that this plant will really get quite large now that it's in the border and not squished into a pot. And this canna continues to pump out flowers. This one, I was always under the impression was miniature, but <laughs> since I planted it in the border, it's now reached up about four feet. On this table right at the back of the greenhouse, I've put all my epithelums and normally they're kind of squished in together. And when they start to flower, it's so difficult to get them out, to extricate them from each other that it's really a nightmare. But anyway, they're all on this table now and I hope that when they go into flower in spring, it'll be magnificent because the back of the greenhouse will just be awash with those big showy flowers. And over in the corner here, we have my dandelion tree. <laughs> and I don't know if you can see, but it's lost a lot of leaves. So this plant has been stripped of leaves on the side that's near us. And that was due to a little mishap I had when I was bubble wrapping the greenhouse. I was coming down from the stepladder and, well, I thought I was nearer the ground than I was and I fell. <laughs> and I fell badly. I fell on top of this dandelion tree and stripped the leaves. I ripped the bubble wrap and I fell through the glass. But luckily the glass didn't break. It just kind of popped out of its frame and was completely intact. So it was really a lucky escape. You may have noticed that my orchids are here in the centre of the greenhouse and these are cold orchids, so ones that can tolerate colder temperatures than most. Most need a 10 degree minimum, but these are ones that will put up with a 5 degree minimum, like cymbidiums. And most of them are here and most of them are in leaf, not doing anything much, but I do have one cymbidium in flower. And over here we have my first cymbidium in bloom. Now, it's only giving me four flowers this year, so it's a bit of a poor result, but I do like the fact that it's flowered so early. This one usually flowers kind of the end of November 
or December and the flowers don't do well in the humidity of the greenhouse. So I would be very happy if it decided to flower at this stage going forward. If you look very closely, you can see that the Cymbidium has a little hitchhiker on top of its nose. Let's see if we can get him to move. There he is. I don't know what this insect is, but I've seen it in places around the garden. I'm sure he doesn't do any harm. There he is. <laughs> he seems happy out anyway. And next door to the Cymbidium, we have the first of my Nerines in flower. Now this is a hybrid called Nefertiti and one that I've just had for, this is my second year and it is, has lovely, lovely flowers with stripes on that are just opening up now. And I have a surprise just next door to the Nerine in the form of my Datura that had a flower that blasted a while ago and surprise surprise it's making two new blooms so I hope I can see these gorgeous flowers in the end and my other recent Nerine purchase is also in bud this is a first flowering for this one so I can't wait to see what the blooms look like and this Senecio is going to flower too First time for this, but I don't think the flowers are going to be very significant at all. It's lovely to see things popping up here and there, buds opening like on this lovely little cactus. And some of my Veltimia are also poking up like this cute little species one that I thought I'd lost. And mostly these are pots of bulbs, South African bulbs, that are still dormant. On the floor here, I have bigger things like my Veltimia there on the left and my Hymanthus albifloss, which is just coming into bloom. And this is the very first flower on my Hymanthus, which isn't even open yet. And I just want to show you briefly these two little plants, which don't look like anything spectacular at the moment, just green leaves and spininess on the back of the leaves. I don't know if you can see that there, but they have spines. But this is the plow breaker. And members will recall a video I made last year where I grew this from seed. And the big thing about this plant is that the tuber below the soil is meant to get so, so enormous that it breaks plows, hence the name. But they're doing really well. And maybe if you're interested, I'll publish that members only video to, um, well, to the general public as well. But they've done so well and I can't wait until they get big and I can grow them like a codex plant with the plough breaking part way above the soil. They're going to look great. This is Eritrina, by the way, which is very surprising because normally Eritrina is just trees that you see in botanic gardens. But this is a plant that's mostly below the soil surface. I got my hands on some cheap bonsai bowls earlier on in the year and I've potted up some succulents in them. And I just see here that my Facrina is producing a flower bud. And I guess that's all I really want to show you. Oh yeah, here's the little aloha that you saw me get from Bumblebee earlier on in the year. I did an unboxing video on it and it is looking super. Look at that. All those kind of red bumps, just fantastic. But I'll tell you what, let's have a look at the other greenhouse now and just see what the setup is over there. We're going this way. Well, this, as you can see, is the working greenhouse where I have various things set up for potting and just doing those jobs that need to be done. And it's so hard to have space to do them in winter because you can't go outside, it's just too wet. Now, I don't have a potting bench yet, 
but this outdoor table in front of us is acting as my potting bench. Over here we have the seedlings you saw me sow not very long ago in September and some of them are doing so well, particularly the cornflowers. The bulbs are not up yet, but that's okay. They can come up in spring. And I've been lifting and cleaning dahlias, as you can see from this great array of tubers here on the staging. These ones here were lifted just today so they're still wet from being washed. In terms of overwintering I haven't yet tested how warm this greenhouse will be so I'm only putting in here things that I know will be okay like the aeoniums and the aeoniums as long as they're kept dry really should be grand in an unheated greenhouse so they're in here. And I also have some large plants that were really too big for the other greenhouse, like the Furcrea, and that's my big Sparmania down there. The Sparmania continues to flower. It just keeps going on and on and on. Now, I have mentioned my big Furcrea before in the greenhouse tours, in fact, in lots of them, because I've had these for like 10 years and they still haven't flowered. And some of you may be wondering, what will this plant look like when it's in flower? And I was very lucky because I spotted it in the botanic gardens this year, not in full flower, but at the point in time when it had finished flowering and was busy producing lots and lots of bulbs from which the plant can be propagated and it looked absolutely amazing. So one day I'm going to have that. I'm going to have those amazing flowers and I'm going to be able to share them with you here. So basically roll on winter. I think I'm well prepared for it. And once again, I just want to give a great big thank you to Organic Garden, who's the company that provided me with this fantastic greenhouse. They're based over in Galway and the link to their site is in the video description. So if you're thinking of a greenhouse for yourself, you cannot do better than this wonderful one. So if you're thinking of a greenhouse, do check out their site. I believe they continue to install over winter. The price of the greenhouse includes installation anywhere in the country. And you could have a greenhouse put in this winter. So you'd be raring to start come spring. And that brings me to the end of this double greenhouse tour, which I hope you enjoyed. And I hope you'll check back to see lots more greenhouse and garden videos. Thanks as always for watching. Bye.